I'm trying to tell you something this morning. You don't come too far, too far to even think about quit. Quit ain't even part of the equation. The only equation you should say equal manifestation. Equal manifestation. I will have whatsoever I say because I sold in the midst when I didn't have. I cried, but I didn't let my tears get me the way I'm trying to move God. I let my faith stay in vain to get the Lord to be with me and because now he's pleased with me, he is now moving on my behalf. Yeah, he's a God of no respect of person. Glory to God, but what he was able to do for me, he's able to do for you. But you got to get something in your heart and you got to keep it in your mind and you got to keep your mouth and your speech seasoned with salt the way it will be speaking and spoken in season line upon line, precept after prom, precept. You got to know what you know because you know because you have a close relationship with the one you say you serve. Yes. Yes. Are you listening to yes. me? Yes. Go ahead. We don't come too far. Yeah. And we ain't backing now. Amen. We're not backing now. The hand of the Lord has went out before you. The place has already been set. The arrival time is already set. The only thing it's going to take is you to keep moving by faith. Moving by faith. Because see, what you don't know is when you get into the prepared place, the prepared place is not just for you. Glory. Oh, God, I heard you. Yes. Hallelujah. The prepared place is for you to occupy so that you can save your lost loved one. Yes. See, they tried to kill you when you even talked about faith. They tried to tear your name down because the fact that what you talk about is not what they talk about because they don't believe what you believe. And because they don't believe what you believe, they called you everything but a child of God. Because, but because they called you everything but a child of God, it didn't stop you from being what God told you you were going to be. And you kept going even though the attacks was coming against you left and right from family members, from friends, from so-called friends. They all like they came in agreement against you. And then all of a sudden it seems like they were surrounded by and they were pointing their fingers at you. And you sitting there thinking that you've done something wrong when you realize, wait, Wait a minute, I've done everything he told me to do, but they don't understand because they're not on the level of faith where I'm at. So therefore, I can't be moved by what they're talking about because I'm right here and they're right here. I can't let them get me out of the love of God. I got to stay in the love because if I stay in the love, he will defend me. He will defend me. He will defend me. Who are you looking to defend you? The one that's talking about you or the one you called you said you serve? You got to know that the Lord is the Lord and there is no other. You got to let folks know this is what I do and this is what I'm going to continue to do. Whether you like it or not, I'm going to be me the Lord because you ain't going to stop this. You got to stop letting people try to stop you. Are you listening to me? You can't let nobody stop you. So what they call you ugly? As long as you don't know that you ugly. You get what you expect. What do you expect? What do you expect? What do you expect? You receive what you expect. You receive. Listen to what I'm trying to get this in your spirit. You receive what you expect. What do you expect? What do you expect? Are you expected to be hurt? Is the reason why you keep getting hurt? Mm. Are you expecting to be like your Roy? Yes. 
Jesus. Jesus. Are you expecting that I am dignified, I'm bona fide, I'm all kind of fine, but I am not a thing? You got to think that way. But the only way you won't think that way is you got to know what God says about you versus what other people are speaking about. Amen. Let, me, let me tell you Amen. something. Amen. I'm going to get in the word. Tell it. Tell Sorry, it. you. Let me tell you something. When people begin to start talking about you in a derogatory manner, you need to think the opposite of what heaven is speaking right. about. Right. See, you got to remember, hell has spokespersons too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people, the devil has people that talk for him as well. But heaven is saying something about you, but if you believe the report of what people are saying, you will never hear what God is speaking about you. Amen. Listen, folks, God is not speaking any ill will against you, to, towards you. He don't think that way towards you, even though you're wrong. Some of you are very wrong. Very wrong. Wrong, wrong with a capital W. Capital R. O-N-G. Highlight. Underline. Circle. Cross hatch. Whatever how you want to do it. Wrong. But because you're wrong, he's trying to make you right. Yes. And how does he make you right? He makes us right by his word. Right. He makes us right by his word. He makes us right by his word. Amen. And the thing is, is so many people have been telling you the opposite of what God has been saying. And some of you have been holding on to a whim of a confirmation. And it seems like the confirmation is getting distant and distant and distant and distant and distant, and distant not realizing it ain't just the confirmation that's going to keep your faith. It's what's inside of you that's confirming through the lives of other people. People are confirming what they see in you. Whatsoever man thinketh, Proverbs 23, verse 7. So, so are you. So is he. That's what scripture says. Whatsoever you think, how do you become to think the way you think? How do you become the way you think? It's because what's deposited in your heart. You want to be loved? Deposit the book of love in your heart. You want to be you want to be rich? Deposit scripture in your heart pertaining to your covenant that you're supposed to be rich and make no and add no sorrow with it. Working triple time and double time is not going to make you rich. Amen. This whole system is set up to, to create you to be small. It is. You got to practice the principles of what God said, but God is telling us that, you know, you need to look at my system of doing things and look at the world system of doing things. And when you take in the two and compare, you'll see how fast you've able to move through this world system and people wonder where you came from. God is getting ready to do some things in this hour that's going to be done, done like some folks going to think you arrived on a rocket. Hallelujah. They're going to wonder where you came from. How did you get to this place where you are now, knowing I know where you came from? Why would they say something like that? Because they're too familiar with you. But what they don't know, and what they don't see, that in the late night hours when you're praying, when you're reading the word, when you're crying out for God for wisdom, they don't see that. They don't see what's been deposited in your heart when you come to church versus that they go to church. You saw them two weeks ago and they still look the same, but they saw you two weeks after that and they saying, I see a change in you from the last time I saw you. You know what's happening? You're graduating into glory. They remain steadfast. Why? Not to say that they're not the level of teaching what they're about receiving is not what they're supposed to be receiving. It's that they where their focus is. See, some people turn church on on Sundays. Go ahead. Turn off at 2 o'clock when they get out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm serious. Catch them on a bad day. Not just during the week. After they leave service. Cut them off at traffic light. We'll see how much word is. Cut them off. We'll see how much word is. I'm just real. I'm just serious. The thing is, is that in order for us to keep things in our right spiritual perspective, we must keep our mind on the word. We must keep our speech sounding like the word. Now, folks, hear me when I say this. You're not going to be speaking scripture all the time. No. Okay? Let's just be real about that. We're not going to be speaking scripture all the time because if you start speaking scripture around me all the time, I'm going to begin to think you suspect. But you're covering up. 
Well, you know what the Bible said? Look, we know about what the Bible says. Just talk. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I hate getting around deep people like that. Yeah. Trying to prove a point to me. You got to prove a point to me. I know if you're deep or not. But then again, even if you're deep and if you're not deep, don't mean I'm going to look at you any different. That's right. I'm going to maintain me. Because I know what God did through me. And what he's doing through me. But we got to understand that we're not in our life, our life's got to be balanced. A lot of the things in our life that has been agitating us, and I'm hearing what the Lord's saying right now, a lot of things that have been agitating you is only because something's out of place in your life that you spiritually overlook. Amen. Oh, Notice I ain't say naturally. Because had you naturally seen it, you'd have been done and got it right, right? But you spiritually overlooked it. That means you didn't discern it. How do I change a troubled circumstance or situation? Remember, we ain't here to change people, right? Right. But we are here to change ourselves by investing time in ourselves so that people can see the change in us and they'll be wanting to change. Are, are you following me? Yes, sir. See, the thing is, the, the Lord said that, that, that this, this message about keeping things in right spiritual perspective is to prepare you for the assignment. The assignment that God has for every child of God. Notice I said every child. I didn't say no preacher. Every child. Every last one of us has an assignment. A, and a purpose. We're called according to his purpose. The purpose with the side of us comes to our comes to our understanding, or we gain understanding of it by hearing him through his word. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I was called to be a pastor. Had you met me 15 years ago, I would have laughed you in your face. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. I never thought I was going to be doing this. Don't get me wrong, I could speak. I could do public speaking, but I never thought I was going to be a preacher. Didn't ask for it. But we're looking to preach. But what happened was I came to a place in my life to say, you know what, Lord? I'm tired of struggling. I'm tired of, of being without. I'm tired of having empty promises not manifested. I'm tired of folks lying when I ain't even looking to trip on them. They just lying on me for no reason. You ever had that happen? Yes. Yes. They just lie on me. No truth within them. Everything they said was a lie. And you got to the point to where you didn't even respond to the, to the lies anymore. That's when, that's when you know when you say, you know what, enough is enough. Right. And so when I got before the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm coming before you right now and I'm asking you to help me with my life. Because it's a wreck. I don't like how I'm living. I don't like the results that are being produced. Where do I need to be planted? I said, and the Lord directed us right to Word of Life Tabernacle. Where we sat under that ministry for ten years, what was I being? What was being done? All the junk was being torn out of me. Mm -hmm. Things that was causing me frustration. Let me tell you something. Things that's causing you frustration. Do you realize it's important to God to get you out of those things? God wants you out of those things that's frustrating, but it's going to take you doing it His way. That's why he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things be added unto you. I need you to do it my way because I already know my way has been proven. My way has been proven because nothing in my way is void. See, we've been suffering from a lot of voids in our life. A lot of voids. And so when I gave my life fully over to the Lord, it's almost like he laid everything out. And I'm going to be honest with you, the process wasn't easy. There was many days I cried. Alone, because I ain't going to lose my man card. <laughs> I'm a Marine. <laughs> I'm a state trooper. I ain't losing my man card for nobody. <laughs> I may look like a little punk before the Lord, but hey, as long as it's the Lord. <laughs> but what happened? He was pruning me. He was cutting me deep. There was nights I couldn't sleep. There's nights you couldn't sleep. Some of you feel like you got insomnia. It ain't insomnia. Something's been worked out in your life. That's it. That's it. And the enemy is trying to make you think. Right. 
there's something wrong with you. You know they don't like you on the job. None of your family come to any of your functions at your house when you have them. Seems like every time you turn around, something's always happening to you. One minute you're happy, one minute you're sad. One minute you're glad, one minute you're mad. What's happening? The enemy is trying to make you look at the outward thing that has transpired outwardly mm -hmm. versus what's been taking place inwardly. See, the Bible tells us over in 2 Corinthians 4, uh, 4 uh, 18. It says, things that are seen are temporal. Things that are not seen are eternal. But if we are spirit-led Christians, I mean, we're led by the Holy Spirit. If we're led by I mean, the Spirit of God, God is ordering our steps. Then it's not that we don't look at the natural things. I'm not saying you overlook them. I'm saying that you're looking at the eternal thing by his word, by making sure that his word is your primary focus. Because if you look at the very circumstance and the situation that is trying to attack you, you're going to quit. That's right. I can promise you you're going to quit. Because what's happening? Whatever you give your earnest heed to or you pay attention to, that's what's going to grow in you. you. You do know that scripturally, right? Mark 4.24 talks about that. It says when you give your most earnest heed to the truth, the truth will begin to grow in you. But if I'm giving my most earnest heed to the lie, mm -hmm. then I'm going to begin to believe the lies of the devil and I'm going to begin to think that. And when I think that, it's hard to change my thought process if I'm not using the word to change it. That tweet. That tweet. It's hard to change my thought process if I'm not using the word to change it. It's the word of God that changes our thought process, people. It ain't me thinking of no good thoughts. You know what? I'll go to Disneyland. I'll go down there and they'll change my thought process. No, you have a good time. You be entertaining the senses. Only realize when you leave Wonderland, life won't be so wonderful. So that mile still get paid. But your bills not. Ain't your mouth? Or your rat? No, your mouth. I ain't going to speak against Disney because I got my own opinion about Disney right now. I'm going to keep that to myself. What parents watch what your children look at on TV. Amen. The enemy has taken completely control over the television. Yes. He on the kids channel now. Mm -hmm. He supplanted things to get them to get into agreement at a young age. You yes. don't understand that. The, the enemy ain't thinking about your house. He's thinking about your soul. He wants to take your soul to a place that was never created for you to go. And if I don't protect my mind, I'm going to a place that was never created for me to go. Because what is he doing? He's got a 50-year, 100-year agenda. Ever how long he can go on with it to try to make sure that he supplant his ways in you to get you to give in to his ways and not doing the Father's ways. Because he knows once you do the Father's way, he knows you, 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 you will be destroyed for a lack of what you don't know. We got to protect what we listen to. Do you realize that you are God's investment? Some of you treat your money, you handle that more carefully than you handle yourself when it comes to the word. That's paper. That's going to burn up. The question is, are you going to burn up with it? Are you listening to me? I can't talk to you for a minute. <laughs> Being a pastor is, 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 is a serious job. A serious job. Because you see things the other people don't even see. You see them. Now, if I was one of them loose cannon pastors, 
You know what a loose cannon is? Loose lips. <laughs> Tell him that. <laughs> now you don't come to me and have a confidential conversation right. only for me to use it to preach about. But we got preachers like that. Amen. You know what that's called? Someone who lacked the fruit of the Spirit. We got a lot of preachers that lack the fruit of the Spirit. I'm not going to name no names, but I know one of them right now. They talk the word, but on their Facebook page, they talk more of the flesh on how they're going to get vengeance on the white man. I'm still trying to find out that white man, who that white man is. <laughs> I'm trying to show you the ploys of the enemy. See, the ploys of the enemy is trying to get you to respond in the flesh. You got to come to a point and a place in your life to where you become spiritually mature, developed, to where you don't respond like you used to respond. Those things shouldn't even move you no more. If they're still moving you now, even after you heard the truth, I mean, the truth didn't take root in your heart. It goes back to how you think. Your decision making based was based upon how you thought. But how you control your decision making or how you control your thought process as long as it's governed by the word. If your thought process is not governed by the word of God, there's going to be decisions made for you subconsciously that you're not even aware of. Meaning your thoughts going to do something for you and you're going to find yourself in you like, how in the world I got here? That's a bad position to be in. I mean, you're not controlled. You're not controlling the situation. It's controlling you. Amen. Jesus never, ever did any assignment without hearing from the Father. Jesus never went into the assignment until he was equipped. Jesus never spoke things of himself, even though when he got frustrated, he started turning on the table. They were like, that, that brother lost his mind. He made sure he connect what he did back to the truth. Are, are you listening to me? Yes. He everything he did, he made sure the truth backed it up. Because he remembered, he said, "I'm a, basically I'm a representative of the one who sent me." You seen him, you seen me. Or if you seen me, you seen him. I and the Father are one. So what is he saying about you this morning? I want you to go into this next assignment or this assignment that I'm either prepared you for. But before you go, you got to go quit. I'm not going to send you to a gunfight with a knife. And a butter knife at that. At least have a steak knife. At least you can throw it. Y'all didn't get that. By the time somebody pulls the person around, you can throw that knife stuck. I'm just trying to. I'm just stuck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's stuck to you. You know what I'm saying? It will stick to you. Yeah. What I'm saying is, God will not send you into the assignment unequipped. You got to be equipped. How do we go into the assignment equipped? I'm going to read scripture. Can I get in the Bible? Yes. Can I talk? Yeah. Yeah. Every time. Because everything I told you comes from the Word. Amen. The Bible says in Ephesians 6.10, it says, put on the full armor of God. The full armor. What's the full armor? The helmet of salvation. The breastplate of righteousness. The shield of faith. Be able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. Your loins girded about with the truth. Your feet sharp with the preparation of gospel and peace. And the sword of the spirit. Some have shown that it was in your hand. <laughs> I use it in this in a way, arm it in your mouth. Ooh. Arm your mouth with the word. Because the word of God is powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the divine and son of the souls and to the joints of the marrow of the spirit and into the discerner of the thoughts and intents of one heart. Arm it in your mouth. By keeping the full armor on, it protects you from the wiles and strategies of the enemy. But you must have it fully on. Now, by having the full armor of God on, you got to make sure that you also are equipped with the Holy Spirit. Jesus never sent the apostles, 
Notice they went from disciples to apostles. He did not send them into the assignment without them being fully equipped. Are you listening to me? So if you got your Bible with me, turn with me quickly to Acts chapter 1. Acts 1. I'm going to show you something. 